lick auto repair. So I got a 2008 Chevy Malibu, and on this one, I got check engine light P0 796 and a P0 700. So we see the 700s where in the transmission bracket of check engine codes and all of that transmission related is what I was trying to say, and. That usually scares everybody because a lot of people don't know too much about transmissions. Good thing that I do transmissions. I'm certified with General Motors. That's what I do. That's literally what I do. Transmissions and everything else with General Motors. So, P0796 is the control valve control no solenoid is stuck off. And when you get issues like that, the transmission or uh, act funny. It make you feel like, hey, my transmission going bad. What's going on with my transmission? So when the engine light came on for this, I was advised that from the owner of the car that when she was on the highway, it jerked a little bit and it acted stupid and the check engine light came on. But then when I got there, there it was no check engine light. So I was driving it on my way here to the garage and I noticed there was like a few flare ups and it felt like it was either between third gear or fourth gear. I really couldn't call it. I didn't have my scan tool to verify which gear I had that flare up. So, um, you know, I do transmissions, I can just kind of guess what it is, and the transmission don't produce any noise, none of that whining noise, none of that. Um, it just got like a shift, and it's not every gear, it's just only when it gets to third and fourth. Now, gradually as I was coming up here in increments, it was starting to go bad, but like I said, I had like a quick flare up, and then once at a light, went forward like a minute up the road then it revved high going up a hill a little bit i'm like oh why are we revving high like that so um from my guess and my head i'm trying to put two and two together we got a valve body issue because it it worked it the, even though the code saying the valve it's, the solenoid stuck off there was points where it was shifting on its own so that made me feel like maybe the valve is working sometimes and sometimes it's not working it's like intermittent so I got the car in the garage now and what I want to do is when we deal with transmissions and you get problems, you can always guess a list of things what could possibly be wrong based on the color of the transmission fluid. That is very important, very important. So I'm hoping that this transmission fluid is not black. Either way, if the transmission was loud, noisy, banging in the gears all hard and everything, this is not the case. They don't bang. It's not noisy and it do not bang in the gears. It just it jerks trying to get to the next gear or whatever. Because the solenoid is stuck off. Oh, and also it defaulted to third gear. So I had to ride for like 15 minutes in third gear. And um, when you get defaulted to, it's a fault in the transmission. You get default to third gear and you get full line pressure. So it'll feel like too aggressive and slow as hell at the same time. So what I'm going to do is check the integrity of the transmission fluid and then I'm going to go from there but I want to also verify it on a scan tool. I'm going to get in the car and I'm going to drive and I'm going to verify on a scan tool um, what's going on. I put up a little video clip so that way you can kind of see the flare up or it missing, it miss shift basically. And I would like to maybe in, an, in another video, I won't have time to do it in this video, but I want to get the approval from, depending on how I go with my diagnostic, I want to get the approval from the owner if I can open up the uh, valve body cover and I want to inspect the valve body, valve body itself. I want to make sure there's no debris between, if there's well, the upper and the lower plate or uh, the valve, the tecum itself. Sometimes it'll be got debris around it and the screens and the solenoids affecting the performance basically that's what debris would do it would get into whatever component it can get to and change the way your internal parts perform that's why it's good to always keep your transmission fluid fresh per the, the color they put the color in there for a reason is dye so that way you could know hey my just like with your engine oil my engine oil or my transmission fluid looks this color that's not a good thing they use the color for indication that's the only thing and then two to keep the fluid separated between um, amongst each other so that way you don't confuse yourself it's the only reason why transmission fluid is the color it is so now that I gave you a tip so let's check out the transmission fluid alright so these transmissions don't have a dipstick you have a 
plug on top of the transmission, a plastic cup like cap, you can remove the pour fluid in it, but you cannot add, I mean, you can add it from the top, but you can't check the level. Why? Because this type of transmission, it has a fill. Well, they didn't put a dipstick in it for you, but it has a fill plug and it has a drain plug for you to check. Now, I could check it. The fill plug is over on this side and that's part of the wheel well, but I want to drain the fluid out because I'm curious. I want to know what it looks like exactly and I need a big sample, not a small sample because if I pour the all of it out just drain it i'll be able to get like the particles and the debris i will be able to see it in the catch can so the size for the plug is 11 millimeter let me move this out the way so you guys can let's see so let it drain for a good while and then we'll come back in a second now I can see some particles in here there are not a lot maybe just a little bit of clutch material that's normal the engine the, it, the powertrain has over a hundred thousand miles in it so I'm gonna swirl it around see if I can because it made like a grayish like stream a little bit that you can't see but I can see like I can see it all right there because the particles probably went down to the bottom Let's swirl it around some more now take note of the way it smells if it, you can't bear it, like smell fresh transmission fluid and then smell used fluid. This one, it stinks. It like it literally stinks, and it needs to. It been needed to get changed a while ago. So this is good for me because I can just go ahead and tell a customer, like, look, I believe it's just your valve body, but when I get the valve body out, I need to test it. How do we test valve bodies? Well, at least the solenoids. You test it by resistance. You really, it's no other really solid way to like really like test it unless you got like some type of uh, testing plate adapter that you can mount on it and test it that way. That's even not an official way because the uh, solenoids really work one way, on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off in a cycle controlled by the computer. I'm still sticking to my guns. The valve body just, I needed to do this before I talked to the customer. Why? Because I can't say you just need a valve body. I have to tell them that, you know, I got experience with this and I believe it's the valve body. But to be exact, I need to pull the valve body cover off, which is going to take a little bit of time, probably like an hour or two to take the cover off. You're going to lose fluid. Obviously, she lost fluid in this case. But, man, I can always pour it back inside of the transmission. But I'm going to try to do the job correctly. So if she's OK with it, I remove the valve body. But. I'm getting a code for it being stuck off. So if I keep getting that code, I cannot service the valve, the uh, solenoid individually. It's not a Honda or any other transmission where they put the solenoids externally on a transmission. No, this is mounted internally. So that's, it's nothing for us for me to do except for let me get on the phone, let her know what's up, and see what she wants to do. And part two, hopefully, uh, is me doing the job. Usually, you know, when she brings her car to me, she gets whatever's needed repair. She keeps her car on the road. I can say that. So, I'm so happy that the transmission color wasn't black at all. It was like brownish a little bit. But I don't want it to be like black and like credit with like clutch material or steel material or bare material, whatever. Least I can say is I don't have an issue with the oil pump. I don't have an issue with bearings being broken cycling throughout the transmission. I don't have an issue with the torque converter came apart cycling through the transmission. Usually all of that shows up in the fluid. That's why I always just say recommended because it was recommended to me a thousand times. Please check the color of your transmission fluid. They provide you with the color red color or pinkish whatever. They provide that color for a reason as an indication for when it is good and when it is bad. That's the first thing they always tell you. Even in training with transmissions, they tell us, check the color of your transmission fluid. What does it smell like? What does it look like? What's inside of the fluid? And I already showed y'all what's in the, in the fluid. This could be like a teeny bit of clutch material. That's normal because they're in between a lot of metal parts or aluminum parts moving around. 
Usually they put a, uh, a magnet in the transmission for to at least catch most of it or whatever. And they put a filter in there as well for that reason. So I consider that to be normal. And I'm just going to go ahead and just say it's the valve body. But part two of the video will be me having a valve body out. And I'll test it. I mean, I've tested valve bodies before, solenoids and everything. But... You could just check the resistance. It was one occasion where I had a 6L80 and I tested the valve body on it. Actually, I'm sorry, it was an 8 speed, an 8L, 8L, 8L90. And I believe when I tested it, it wasn't in range for like the parameters when I tested the, uh, the uh, solenoid. But like I said, you can't replace the solenoid individually. You have to replace the whole thing. And that involves well, programming and everything. But good thing I'm a General Motors tech. so Because I can get the valve body, upper and lower plate, and the Tecum. And I can um, program it at the same time. So, be look out for video number two. You got any questions, transmission questions? Y'all going to be seeing more transmission stuff. I'll try to get on my rear end about producing more videos like this. And get into more in depth. So... I could have gotten on a road, but it is dark outside, and then too, I don't want to be like holding the camera and then trying to produce a transmission issue at the same time because that's very dangerous and get an accident that way. I lose control in the car. It's whatever happened, it's kind of dangerous a little bit. My eye needs to be focused on the road. So, leak auto repair, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Any got, anybody got any car questions, make sure y'all get at me in the email, look at me in the about section. Um, you want to send me some cool stuff? All of that information in the about section. You want to cash at me? My cash app is simple, leak auto repair, leak auto, dollar sign leak auto repair. I even leave it in the video or whatever because I see a lot of people doing that or whatever. It's a few occasions people cash at me some money because they were very appreciative. Like people would be like, oh, you saved me a lot of money. You saved me this amount of money. You saved, if I saved you money and you knew for a fact that I saved you money and I did the job good, why wouldn't you not like tip me, right? 